For this demonstration, we'll be focusing on Hurricane Ida, which was a Category 4 Atlantic hurricane that made landfall in Louisiana in August of 2021. In this demonstration, we'll be using ArcGIS Pro and NASA's Global Precipitation Measurement, or GPM iMERGE, Early Rate ArcGIS Image Service. This service estimates precipitation rates for multiple sensors and incorporates calibrations from rain gates. Data is available at 30-minute intervals and spans all the way from the year 2000 to present day. It also provides global coverage, which we'll see in a moment. The first step is to obtain the service endpoint by the content item page available on the GESIS portal or NASA's ArcGIS Online. From here, you can choose to open in a tool of your choice, or simply copy the URL to enter the endpoint into your tool. Within ArcGIS Pro, we'll go to Add Data, Data from Path, and copy that same URL to add the ArcGIS image service to our map. Here you can see it already displayed, covering the globe, and the first thing we want to do is jump to our area of interest, which for Hurricane Ida was the Gulf of Mexico. We'll also want to adjust the appearance of the data, which currently has a processing template applied. We're going to remove that processing template to look at the raw data values. You'll notice that this will adjust the symbology and it may make the data hard to see, but when we look at a specific date and time, we'll apply the dynamic range adjustment and you'll be able to visualize the hurricane. Within the properties tab, we wanna tell the service to only be looking at a specific date. In this case, it'll be August 30th, 2021, when Hurricane Ida makes landfall in, in the state of Louisiana. But here you can also implement a range of dates and look, as, look at the data as it flows through the hurricane path. But for here, this particular instance, we're just looking at August 30th. So again, you can see some data values applied. And while we're not interested in visualization just yet, if we are interested in looking at uh, the dynam dynamic range adjustment output, we'll see a much more visible and obvious hurricane formed. The first thing we'll want to do is convert the units from the ArcGIS image service from millimeters per hour to inches per hour. The current service uses millimeters per hour, but in this case, we're gonna um, employ the raster function unit conversion to adjust the service output from millimeters to inches. When we click this, we'll create a new layer, which will appear on the map. For validation, we'll want to do a quick check to make sure that the conversion units are correct. So by using the identification tool in the pop-up window, we'll do a quick comparison of the 1.5 inches compared to the GPM original service of 38.79 millimeters. The next thing we'll want to do is extract data that represents a certain threshold. So in this case, we'll want to weed out any data values that did not meet a certain threshold. In this case, we'll look at a half an inch per hour rate. We'll use the extract by attribution tool and input our converted units service and apply a clause where the values are greater than or equal to 0 0.5. This will create another output with just the extracted data. Here you'll see that I went ahead and adjusted the symbology. Users can do this as well very easily. In this instance, I just used the precipitation color scheme with the uh, default symbology within ArcGIS Pro. You'll notice that you can also change the stretch type and adjust the statistics and mask as needed. The next thing we'll want to do is just look at our area of interest. Because this is a global service, you'll see other values around the world. But we're again only focused on Hurricane Ida in the state of Louisiana. So the next thing we'll want to do is apply another raster function, this time a clip, to only look at data within our map extent. So we'll use our extracted service and we'll clip anything that's not currently within our map extent. One important note here is within the general tab, we wanna make sure that our output pixel type matches the service. In this case, we're going to use the 32-bit unsigned pixel type to match what's in the original GPM iMerge service. And this will give us an output, which is an integer value raster. You can then create a new layer, which we'll show here, and the symbology again will be slightly adjusted. The next step we want to do is convert this raster to a polygon. Converting to a polygon will allow us to employ additional spatial analysis. For this, we'll employ the geoprocessing tool raster to poly. 
and we'll input that clipped area of interest. And we also want to make sure that we uncheck the simplify polygons. That will heavily distort the output and is not necessary for this particular task. So uncheck that, run the tool, and you'll see a very similar feature display. It's essentially just converting raster to polygon. Now is where we can do some more fun with GIS, which involves leveraging additional data sources and looking at spatial trends and patterns and areas of interest alongside your data. So in this particular in, uh, incident, we're going to connect to the Living Atlas, which is a global repository of GIS-ready content, and we're going to search for bridges to find and bring in the National Bridge Inventory Feature Service. When that displays on the map, you'll see that there are hundreds of millions of points. Too many to begin with. And again, we really only want to look at our particular area of interest where we're experiencing a forecast and uh, high rainfall. So in this instance, we're going to use the Select by Location tool. And we're going to look at any natural, National Bridge inventory features that are within our polygon. Using this tool, we'll now only be looking at specific bridges or critical infrastructure that might be impacted by heavy rainfall. This might be useful for status reports or just keeping a closer eye on evacuation routes as the hurricane moves through. From here, we can also uh, create a layer from our selection. And this will allow us to only look at the, the data sets features that are, are within that particular area of interest and taking out all of the background noise. From here, we can use that and look at anything that we're interested in uh, regarding the status or ownership or anything else to run additional analysis for this particular event.